Hey y'all, welcome back to Mama Loves Manga. Today I'm here to talk about The Moon and the Sandals. This is backwards. The Moon and the Sandals by Fumi Yoshinaga. She is quickly becoming one of my favorites. I love her art style. Yes? Can you unlock what? The box is your room clean? I need to check. Okay, you go check. In case y'all forgot that I'm an actual mom. As I was saying, Fumi Yoshinaga is quickly becoming one of my favorite mangaka. I like her art style and I like the themes that she tends to speak on. A little background about this series, The Moon in the Sandals is actually Fumi Yoshinaga's. Can you see that gnat? Just, is it stuck to my lip gloss? Ew! Ew, it was! Ew! What happened? <laughs> what happened? Boy, <laughs> the gnat got stuck to my lip gloss. What do you want, sir? <laughs> it's, it's kind of clean. Okay, go go unlock Roblox. Bye-bye! <sighs> okay, I'm back. That was disgusting. It was the first title she wrote as a professional. And I'll be honest, I was a little hesitant to pick it up when I first found out about it because I thought from reading the description on the, the back of the first volume on Amazon, I thought this was going to be a story about a romance between a teacher and a student. L let me just read the back of the book and you'll see. Young Mr. Ida might be a newbie teacher, but he is capable enough. Problem is, every time he writes his lecture on the board, he feels this deeply intense gaze boring through the back of his head. Could he be doing something wrong? For huge and intimidating student Kobayashi, Mr. Ida can't do anything wrong. In fact, Ida is Kobayashi's Mr. Right. That's why Kobayashi keeps giving the timid teacher looks like a kill. Just as Ida begins to lose confidence in his teaching, Kobayashi musters the courage to clarify that the intense gaze he gives is not one of hatred, but is one of love. Spurred on by his feelings, Kobayashi ends his confession with a kiss. Ida doesn't push him away. All should be well, but it isn't. After all, the course of true love never does run smoothly. Now. If y'all have been watching me for a while, y'all know I was not about to pick this up. If this story had gone the way that the back of this first volume claimed, this was not going to be in my collection. I was not going to read it and I was just going to pretend like it didn't exist. However, a review on Amazon saved me from making a mistake because the review said, hey, basically the review was like, hey, y'all listen. I know that the back of the book says that it's going to be this, but I promise you it's not that. There is no relationship between the student and teacher. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to trust you, I'm going to buy it. And I'm so, so glad that I did. This series, this is, it's so good, it, it's so good. So it does follow a, t a teacher, a young teacher named Mr. Ida, and there is a student named Kobayashi, and Kobayashi does have a crush on Mr. Ida. After Kobayashi kissed him, Mr. Ida didn't just say, oh my gosh, be gone with you. He was just like, oh, wait a minute. This kid is gay. No wonder he's been like staring at me. And so instead of just completely like telling him to go away, he was like, I'm going to kind of be a mentor to him. Now, Mr. Ida is in a relationship, a very solid relationship. And um, so the this crush that Kobayashi has on Mr. Ida eventually turns into more of a, it opened the door for more of a friendship and a mentorship. And it was really nice to see Kobayashi have someone that he could talk to about being gay. And because he didn't have that in his real life. 
And Kobayashi does eventually become friends with a, another student, a male student, and then eventually has feelings for the student, and then they eventually end up together. Um, and it's... <laughs> It's such a cute story. You also get to see Mr. Ida and his struggles with his um, partner, whose name I cannot remember. I can't remember Mr. Ida's partner's name, but they are struggling with their own stuff. Mr. Ida and his actual partner have been together for a long time, and they are wanting to get a, an apartment together, but they can't because um, for whatever reason at that time, people didn't want to rent um, apartments to to men unless they were related, which is crazy to me. The reason that they were given is because they were the, the, the renters or the rentees, the landlords, <laughs> the landlords were afraid to have two men in the same home because it wasn't going to be clean, which totally, I'm sure that was a lie. I'm sure it was because they didn't want to support the gay. Basically, they had to adopt each other in order to have the same last name so that they could actually live together. I don't want to give too much away, but their story is very real. This series is marketed as Yaoi, and I'll be honest, after I read the first volume, I didn't see what was Yaoi about it, except for the fact that it is about gay men. I was, But I was confused because I was like, in my head, when I think of Yaoi, I think of sexy times like I think of scenes where there is there are things happening and you didn't really see much of that in the first volume at all so I was like this isn't yaoi this is shonen eye this is just love you know but y'all this second volume <laughs> Ooh, it's spicy <laughs> I don't read a whole lot of BL or yaoi not because I don't enjoy it but because a lot of the t a lot of the titles can be very problematic. Like one t one title that I've been reading for a while is Ten Count, and I do enjoy that series. But there are certain things about that series that make me cringe, and that's the, that's the case with a lot of BL titles. A lot of the ways that the relationships are started tend to be um, borderline abusive, or sometimes they cross that line. You, I mean, those of you who are familiar with BL and Yaoi titles, y'all know, y'all know how problematic these types of series can be, but this one honestly felt so realistic and um, wholesome, really. Like, none of the couples were started as a product of, like, the R word, you know. Um, everyone was able to come into their own feelings and no one was forced. And I, I really appreciated how realistic these relationships are. No one was portrayed as overly promiscuous just because they're gay. They were just normal people who happen to be gay and happen to be in relationships. And it felt, it feels like real relationships. And that's one thing that I feel like a lot of um, Yaoi titles forget is that they are writing about people. Gay people are people. Gay relationships are relationships. <sighs> Thank you Fumi Yoshinaga for being a yaoi artist, a yaoi mangaka who understands that. My feelings about the plot, I really enjoyed it. There's not a set plot, it's really you're just seeing these people's lives and um, there are some conflicts and these conflicts do get resolved, but it's more so like life. And I enjoy that very much because life doesn't have a plot. It is just life. I highly enjoyed this and also the sexy times. <laughs> the sexy times are great. Let me show you what the art looks like and I'm gonna only show you in the first volume because there aren't any um, inappropriate things. <laughs> so her art, as I've said in the past, her art is very simple. She doesn't use a whole lot of backgrounds. It's mostly focused on the people, the characters, and the characters do have a tendency to look fairly similar, but she does an excellent job of showing their personalities through their facial expressions. She does a great job with humor. Like when you see a character who looks like that, that's just them 
in a humorous um, position. I don't I I love I love her art style. It's very clean, very easy to follow. Um, and I'm totally okay with her characters looking fairly similar because, like I said, she does a great job of showing their personalities and differentiating them with their personalities. If you like Fumiyoshi Naga's series Oku, if you like Antique Bakery, if you like All My Darling Daughters, which is a one-shot manga that I haven't talked about yet. I read it in February and I have been meaning to talk about that one. I will, I just keep forgetting. But anyway, if you like her works, you're going to love this one if you haven't read it already. I freaking love it. And now I need to go and start collecting What Did You Eat Yesterday, I think is a title by her that people have mentioned to me and I need to start collecting it because I've heard that certain volumes are getting hard to find. In the end, would I recommend The Mood and the Sandals by Fumi Yoshinaga? Yes, 100% I would recommend it. I would recommend it to people who love to read BL or Yaoi titles, but you're tired of the problematicness that tends to come with that genre. Um, I also recommend it to people who love to read romance stories. I recommend it to people who love slice of life and you like character driven stories. But make, but keep in mind, I recommend this to people that are, I would say 16 and up. This says for mature audience eight, this says for mature audiences 18 plus. I think 16 and up would be totally fine um, because at 16 year olds, you know, I was 16 once. I don't think I would have my my almost 13 year old read this um, because I don't want to answer questions. <laughs> I don't want to answer the question. Anyway, that's that's all I have for today. Um, <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.